they were the buildings of their time, but with a little bit of subtle finesse. They provide the city with a lot of prestige. York was built around confectionery, certainly in the 20th century. Yes, those buildings could tell a few stories. When I first joined Terry's in 1968, I always wanted to be an engineer of some form. Father already worked for the business. He was the head chef at St Helens Square restaurant. He said to the chief engineer, my lad's looking for a job in engineering. And chief engineer said, tell him to come and see me. In those days, the companies always liked to keep it in the family. Not just Terry's, Round Trees, the railways, the glassworks, the British Sugar Factory. They were all very much family orientated workforces. Terry's were respected as a well-known, established company that looked after their workforce. We had our own doctors, nurses on site. Um, they also uh, started up with uh, company pension schemes, welfare after you'd retired. They helped you in, in every way possible. I mean, even socially, any sport you could think of, we had a club for it. People were keen to be a part of something. A lot of people met their wives and girlfriends and husbands and within the working community. Working in the offices like we did, we had male girls used to come round every day. When Sheila joined, I don't know, something must have just clicked chemistry-wise. The chief engineer at the time, who was a Scotsman, had noticed that I'd maybe taken a bit of a shine to this young lady and was maybe spending a bit too much time in the office rather than out working on the, on the drawing board. And uh, he, he called me in one day quite seriously and uh, said, I've noticed you've taken a wee bit of a shine to this secretary of mine that's standing in for Jenny. He says, if you intend to stay with the company and in my department, you can either have the sack or you marry her. And I said, oh, right. Oh, he says, and by the way, Margaret and I want an invitation to the wedding. Get it sorted. And <laughs> from that, <laughs> I took uh, advice from my senior, uh, senior officer. Twelve months later, we got married. This was all senior management at the front here. And when I started here in the, in the 1960s, if I needed to come here, I was only allowed through those doors if I'd been invited to come. The rest of the time, you had to use the rear entrance. There aren't many places that would have such an ornate decoration inside a central office block. This modern idea of open plan offices isn't new. It was happening in the 1920s and 30s. It was quite interesting when I first got into the offices on Monday mornings, when this was full of office staff, particularly the young girls chatting, you could stand up there, you could hear every word they'd said. By Jove, they used to have some wonderful weekends, some of them. The early Terry products were not products for dare I say it, the working man, because they were too expensive. The philosophy was that Terry's would produce top quality, top of the range confectionery. 1767, chocolate orange, which was an expensive product when it was first produced in 1932. Half a crown or something like that. You know, that would be a week's wages for somebody almost at a, a working man's level. Back in the early part of uh, the 20th century, most members of the public hadn't seen oranges, I hadn't seen bananas. The idea of it came from the shape of an apple. And originally, it was actually called chocolate apple. And then I think later on, somewhere along the line, they would have sat around with the chemist and decided, this is a, a, a winner here. Orange flavored, go bomb. And it's history. The chocolate orange was one of the last century's revelation in confectionery. Unique in its shape, unique in its flavour and you could share it with friends, family or you could be very indulgent and eat the whole lot yourself. The Terry family owned the business right up until 1963 and for whatever reason a decision was made that uh, they should find a third party partner. Along came the Forty group 
which was owned by Sir Charles Forty at that time. And basically, they were the hoteliers. The Forties kept the business uh, for 19 years. It was decided that they would sell the company. And uh, the taker at that time was Colgate Palmolive. And then that was the first time we became an American-owned company. And things changed considerably within that regime. They didn't understand the confectionery marketplace because we had their marketeers coming in wanting to change this, that and the other and nearly everything they did kind of like flopped. So uh, I think it was decided that that was it. And at that time when they decided to sell was the time that um, Peter Terry and the rest of the Terry board got together and they were looking to buy the business back as a management buyout. But unfortunately, United Biscuits were also in the marketplace for buying something up at the time. And I think they had a little bit bigger purse. They bought Terry's to add to their portfolio. Um, they bought a company in France called Chocometz, bought a company in the Netherlands called Vacada, they bought the place in Italy, which was Aura. I think they bit off more than they could chew. And standing in the wings were Kraft Foods. And uh, they came along and said, right, we'll have a slice of that. The way they wanted to go forward was volume over a small portfolio of product. They were going to conquer the world with chocolate oranges. We geared up to produce all this product for the American market, did the test runs, they said it was going to sell like hot cakes, and it fell flat as a fat on its face. And I think by that time, uh, the Americans had decided that uh, production costs were too great in the UK, and so they must have made a commercial decision that they would transfer certainly the production of chocolate oranges to Poland. The assortments we still had left, which was all gold, went to Sweden and the factory actually closed in November 2005 and it was a sad time. After uh, 237 years as a Terry name in York, it was in Europe. If it reopened tomorrow, I'd go back. Because it was a friendly, happy place to work. The ideal result for me was to make chocolate on that site from start to finish, from the bean to the finished product. Not necessarily on the scale that Terry's made it, but it is perfectly possible. The technology is there and if, as long as the fight is there and the financial backing is there, I can see it happening. A phoenix could rise from the ashes just yet. And let's hope it does. <laughs>